A short-lived effort by ASRock allowed temporary unlocked overclocking of the multiplier for i3 and i5 CPUs, which were not K-SKU Intel CPUs. And as you all know, only the 6600K and 6700K of the Skylake CPUs are meant for overclocking. And this BIOS update allowed you to go in there and increase the multiplier beyond stock. So you get multiplier times base clock, or BCLK, equals the operating frequency. ASRock explicitly removed its Sky OC feature from BIOS in a recent patch, and it looks as if it may be thanks to pressure from Intel. ASRock isn't the only motherboard maker supporting non-K overclocking, though. Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI also offer Skylake overclocking, but it appears that these big three manufacturers still have the feature available. So if they're receiving pressure, they haven't responded to it just yet. Get it while it's hot, I suppose, with this overclocking feature because the new BIOS updates coming out have removed it from ASRock boards. Epic Games made big news this week with its VR editor for Unreal Engine 4, which allows developers to make their games within virtual reality while wearing the Oculus or other relevant headsets. It all looks a bit silly in the footage where we see Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney and technical director Mike Fricker flailing around to demonstrate the VR building experience, but to be fair, everyone looks silly in VR. The difference between what Epic's showing and what everyone else has done so far is pretty critical, as Epic Games allows a full six degrees of freedom for interface management using VR controllers, object placement, object transforms and rotation, and full immersion with the VR environment. The tool appears most useful for developers of VR games as it would allow more accurate representations of the user experience. The Unreal VR editor should be further demonstrated at March's GDC 2016, which we'll be in attendance for, so check the channel for more on that. AMD hasn't reasonably updated its FX processors in a number of years now, but that hasn't stopped the company from releasing refreshes along the way, including a new Wraith CPU cooler for the AMD FX 8370 and other special chips, and that was released just this week. We just reviewed AMD's new Wraith cooler, showing that its cooling to noise ratio has improved substantially over the old stock cooler, and the new Wraith is available on the FX 8370 and doesn't impact the unit's price, which is still a firm $210, but 8370s with old coolers can be purchased now for $10 less, so that's a bit of a difference, but not much of one. If you're going with aftermarket coolers, then you could probably forego the new Wraith unit. If not, then you must get the 8370s new Wraith cooler because it's just that much quieter, though the argument for the 8370 is pretty weak at this point, and we generally recommend Intel or waiting till Zen because these FX processors are pretty aged architecture now, as you'll see in our full review. Japan-based Sony broke news this week with entering the SSD marketplace, so it is making consumer SSDs starting with the SLWM series of drives going up to 480 gigabytes in total capacity. The SSD is advertised to be using the Fizon S10 controller, which has grown in popularity as Sandforce has lost market presence with its aged 2281 controllers. The SLWM SSDs are advertised by Sony as running at 560 megabytes per second sequential read and 530 megabytes per second sequential write. 4K speeds, which are more interesting to gamers, are not yet known and neither is pricing or other further information. This week was also covered pretty heavily already on our channel and website, including the Corsair 400C review, AMD's Wraith Cooler, which we just mentioned, and the iBuyPower Revolt 2 PC. And we have reviews of all of that. I'd strongly recommend checking out the 400C because that's fairly big news, even though it came out a little bit ago. We tested several cooling configurations on the case, which educates everyone as to how these fans interact with tower coolers on motherboards. Asus this week unveiled what is probably the most hideous, or near it anyway, keyboard we've ever seen. It is a mechanical keyboard called the Horus GK2000. To be fair to Asus, there is worse competition out there, but from a high-profile manufacturer, this is pretty bad. It does, though, rival Asus's gaming routers that have basically a fortress of solitude of antennas built up around them. Although it looks like plastic from the photos and what you're looking at here, the new Horus keyboard actually uses a CNC'd 3mm thick aluminum casing for the top of the keyboard, which is very expensive. And the board also sports a massive wrist rest that, if you used it, would take up nearly the entirety of any normal human's desk space. It's running Cherry MX Red switches, red LEDs with individual key lighting, and borrows some ideas from Corsair with a brushed metal faceplate. Unfortunately, it's covered up by the winged atrocity at the top and massive wrist rest at the bottom, so there's not a lot of room for this type of thing. We don't yet know the price or the launch date of the keyboard, but there's still hope that the latter answer is never. 
That's it for this week's Hardware News Recap. Check the channel for news on gaming, including some Mass Effect, Battlefield, and Titanfall news that we posted just yesterday. And as always, hit the Patreon link in the post-roll video if you want to help us out directly, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time.